A while back on the French think tank, we had the opportunity to have Merkaba in. He built a machine that he calls the Merkaba machine. What it does is it's shaped like the actual Merkaba, but on the inside it's using sound in order to spin a neodymium magnet that's circular or a sphere. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Sound? You don't see a speaker in sight. Well, I guess you could say he's using frequency to do it. I like to look at it as using sound to do it. Either one. What's going on is all of the wrappings that you see around it creates a magnetic field. And then he takes another coil. And you can see where the arrows are. Those right there are making the second coil. So, in a way, it's like a speaker. Is it producing sound or frequency? Well... To give you a hint, he's using a stereo receiver in order to drive everything. When we had a chance to talk to the inventor, he said that he can change between the frequencies and each frequency would make the neodymium ball do something a little different or spin in a different direction. You could not use every single one of them at the same time, but you can use each one of them at one time. So, if you had a song playing, it would then go to each one of them and turn them on individually. Now that I brought you up to date on what the machine is doing, I just want to tell you I keep getting a nagging feeling. There's something more to this that we're just not seeing. I keep seeing it in my head, and it's about time that I get it out. This is what I keep seeing in my head. I keep seeing a round sphere of water. I continuously see the quartz crystal on the inside. I also see two rods going in there. And they have little flat ends so they can sit against the crystal. I know the configuration sounds strange. But jump down the rabbit hole with me and let's take a look. If we understand piezoelectricity, when you strike two pieces of quartz together, they create light. What they're doing is creating energy on the inside. Now, we generally use quartz crystal as a clock feature. Tap it once, it taps back. Put tuning forks on both sides and you can activate it. Put it in pressure and then you can use it as well. It's great for tuning. However, when you want power out of it, you must activate the crystal in a way that is not like everything else. It needs to be smacked together, or it needs something smacking it. So how do we accomplish that? Well, you can't just go smacking two crystals together while it's in a bowl full of water. That doesn't work at all. Right now, the machine is set up to put out sound or frequency, and that's not going to do it either. So we have to change this just a little bit. Let's attach those coils to piezoelectric discs. We'll put the piezoelectric discs on the outside of the sphere of water. Then we can create a pulse wave to go into the water. So I know what you're thinking. What's a little pulse wave going to do to this? Well, if you connect, instead of a stereo receiver, you connect an ultrasound device. Now we're getting a pretty heavy pulse. But please understand that piezoelectric discs are receivers and transmitters. So while each one's going off individually, the other ones are receiving the same signal. It's going to create a giant echo chamber in there, or a resonance chamber, in order to resonate the actual quartz itself. That's where we're going to get our power. Let's just talk about the shape itself of the quartz. It's actually set up as a Makaba as well. Now, this is for a certain reason. As you see on your screen, all these balls coming into the center of a Makaba. What is it that we're looking at doing? Well, this is actually from the creator of the machine. And what he's saying is the energy itself goes into the center just like that. And it doesn't like to stay there perfectly. It keeps moving in continuous motion. That's exactly what we want to produce in the center of our quartz. In order to activate it, we must always keep it in a resonant state. So now that we have all this energy in the center, how does the energy flow actually work? If we were going to talk about the conventional way to use quartz crystal, 
we would think energy in, energy out. But that's not what we're doing here. We're taking piezoelectric disc and we're creating a pulse wave in order to activate the crystal inside. So all we need to do is pull the energy out. Because the energy needs to be activated in something, you cannot pull it out by putting pressure on the side. You can get a small amount of energy, you cannot get a big amount of energy. Therefore, the fluid itself has to act as a go-between. It has to be able to go with the water getting energized, and then you pull the energy from the water. Therefore, in the end of each rod, you would need a sponge-like material in order to keep it always wet and always flowing. Because we're in the rabbit hole, let's go ahead and jump in a little deeper. Ask yourself, over time, did we tell ourselves it was there? Do we have these shapes all around us and we just don't understand what they're for? Let's take a look at many shapes around here that are in the Macabre shape and let's see what people think about them. As I see all these shapes and structures, I'm starting to realize one thing. Maybe it's all supposed to be this way. Crystalline shape in the center, Macabre on the outside. Maybe there's something to this. It seems that everybody who looks at these has some form of this vision in their head. Otherwise, they have one other. It seems to be that they are telling us that there's something that has to go into the crystal. We see these shapes doing it. There's also these shapes where they go around it, saying that there's some kind of uniformity to everything. When I said it was like a resonance chamber, maybe they thought the same thing. Maybe this image shows that it was a resonance chamber. Since we are completely lost in the rabbit hole, let's continue one step further. These are the images I also see out there. A human figure inside the macabre. Why would that even make sense? Well, we have crystalline in our body. We actually can make it when we have gout, or it's in our brain as well. It's crazy. Maybe it's saying that we can communicate on some scale once we actually activate the crystal itself. That's just amazing. But there's one more step in the rabbit hole. We can go just a little deeper. This is what I keep seeing. However, someone else must have seen it that way too, because this is what they made. This is what they drew. This is what they put up in their program in order to make it. So you can see this picture. Is it really, truly the energy source for a ship? Is there something more to this? Well, we're just going to have to find out, aren't we? At some point, we're going to have to build something like this. Guys, we're already deep in the rabbit hole. You never know what's coming next. That's why it's the Fringe Think Tank. It's not the NASA Think Tank. It's not the Everybody Approves of It Think Tank. It's the Fringe Think Tank, where we go outside the box and look at everything everyone else won't. If you want to catch an episode of the Fringe Think Tank, it goes on every Monday night, 3 p.m., Pacific Standard Time.